Isn't it lovely when we can sing of Jesus' name? Oh, praise the Lord for that. Our 10 days of prayer continues. We started on Sabbath with Jesus' most precious gift, which we heard, which was the Holy Spirit. On Sunday, day two, grasping the gift. Monday, day three, surrendering is the key. And Tuesday, day four, putting revival into practice. If you missed any of the services before, you can actually go back. Praise the Lord for that. You can go back and view it on Central Seven Day Adventist on Facebook, on YouTube, 
Central Hope SDA, you can also view any of the sermons this week or the word of prayer this week um, for the 10 days of prayer. This tonight, we're going to dive into day four, where we look at the topic, spiritual or carnal? What's the difference? Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we are so grateful that we can look into your word and we can find our directions there. Most of all, we are so grateful that we have that communication line with you where we can approach you at any time in prayer. So as we go through this word tonight, we ask, oh God, that you hide me behind the cross and that some soul tonight will hear a word from you. In Jesus' name, amen. Spiritual or carnal, what's the difference? A scripture for us to reflect on tonight. 1 Corinthians 2.16. It says, For who hath known the mind of the Lord, that he may instruct him? But we have the mind of Christ. Think about that. What is our link to heaven? Before I go into talking about the spiritual and the carnal Christians, we need to remember that we're not talking about sinners and non-sinners. All people, spiritual and carnal alike, are sinners in need of a Savior. Let me repeat that. All of us, spiritual and carnal alike, are sinners in need of a Savior. That includes me and it includes you also. Our only righteousness comes from him. Him meaning our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Instead, the criterion for inclusion in one group or the other, and we're talking about the group carnal and non-carnal or spiritual and carnal. So it says the criterion for inclusion in one group or the other is our personal relationship with the Holy Spirit. God has stipulated that we cannot dissolve our relationship with the Holy Spirit without damaging our connection to heaven. I want you to grasp what we're saying here. If we dissolve our relationship with the Holy Spirit, we are actually damaging our connection to heaven. Let's go in his word. Hear what he says. In Matthew 12, 32, it says, And whosoever speaketh a word against the Son of Man, it shall be forgiven him. But whosoever speaketh against the Holy Ghost, it shall not be forgiven him neither in this world, neither in the world to come. Are we hearing what God's word is saying here? You can talk about John as long as you want. And you ask forgiveness, you'll be forgiven. But if you speak against the Holy Ghost, it shall not be forgiven you, neither in this world, neither in the world to come. People, we need to really think about this. We cannot blaspheme the Holy Spirit. We cannot speak. A, you talk about the unpardonable sin. This is what we're talking about here in Matthew 12, 32. Furthermore, Ellen G. White explains in Desire of Ages, page 32, he who rejects the works of the Holy Spirit is placing himself where repentance and faith cannot come to him. It is by the Spirit that God works upon our heart. So if we're talking about God working on our heart, we're talking about having a relationship with the Holy Spirit in order for God to work on our heart. And it's worth repeating, the only person I should be evaluating as spiritual or carnal is myself. Joan can only evaluate Joan. God can work in others' heart and doesn't need me 
to pin labels on fellow church members. Did we hear that? Let me repeat that. God can work in others' heart and does not need me to pin labels on fellow church members. The good news is that if I'm disappointed by what he reveals in my heart, he can change me starting today. And the same goes for all of you. If you're disappointed by what he reveals in your heart, he can change you starting today. So again, our link to being a spiritual Christian is the Holy Spirit. Now, let's look at the difference between two church members. Like we said before, the spiritual church member and the carnal church member. We'll start with the spiritual. The spiritual person is a truly converted Christian. Now, let's look at that word converted seriously. That's the key word there. The spiritual person is a truly converted Christian. Although born a sinner, he is called spiritual because he has a living and growing relationship with the Holy Spirit. The Apostle Paul writes, But he who is spiritual judges all things, yet he himself is rightly judged by no one. For who has known the mind of the Lord that he may instruct him? But we have the mind, spirit of Christ. Again, we're looking at 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 15 and 16. It is telling us Jesus is the center of the spiritual person's life and reigns in his heart and determines his priority. The spiritual person has committed himself completely, I say, completely to Jesus and acts continuously for the Holy Spirit. In Luke eleven thirteen, 13, it says, If he then, being evil, knows how to give good gifts unto your children, how much more shall your heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit to them that ask? In the context of Laodicea, the spiritual person could be called hot. As we see in Revelation 3.15, I know the works that thou art neither cold nor hot, I would thou wert cold or hot. And further, in the parable of the ten virgins, he could be called wise. We're still talking about the spiritual person. First we talk about that person could be called hot. Now we're talking about he can be called wise. Let's look at Matthew 25 verses 2 to 4. It says, and five of them were wise, and five were foolish. They that were foolish took their lambs and took no oil with them. But the wise took oil in their vessel with their lamb. Let's move on. Another phrase that is used for the spiritual person. A spiritual person experiences life more abundantly. In John 10.10, 10, it says, The teeth cometh not, but for to steal, and to kill, and to destroy. I am come that they may, might have life, and that they might have it more abundantly. And it's filled, the next one is, they're filled with all the fullness of God. As stated in Ephesians 3.19, and to know the love of Christ, which passeth knowledge, that he might be filled with all the fullness of God. Finally, he rejoices that he has been saved through faith. That's the spiritual person we're still talking about. They rejoice that they have been saved through faith. In Ephesians 2.8, puts it this way, For by grace are ye saved through faith. And that not of yourself, it is the gift of God. So here we saw 
characteristics of the spiritual person. Those are the ones who are, they have committed themselves completely to Jesus and ask continuously for the Holy Spirit. They are considered hot. They are considered wise. They have life more abundantly. They, they, they are filled with all the fullness of God. And they have been saved through faith. Although the spiritual person faces setbacks and temptation, he continues to fix his eyes on Jesus. He continues to fix his eyes on Jesus. In contrast, let's look at the carnal church member. A carnal person might have an artificial or divided relationship with God. He might be quietly indifferent to the Holy Spirit or even openly rebellious. Here's what the Apostle Paul has to say in 1 Corinthians 3, 1 to 4. And I, brethren, could not speak to you as the spiritual people, but as to carnal, as to babes in Christ. I fed you with milk and not with solid food. For unto, until now, you were not able to receive it. And even now, you are still not able. For, for you are still carnal. For where there is envy, strife, and division among you, are you not carnal? And behaving like mere men? For when one says, I am of Paul, and another, I am of Apollos, are you not carnal? Here in this scripture, we can conclude that the defining factor must be our relationship with the Holy Spirit. Carnal describes a person who lives by the flesh. That is, by normal human strength, not by the Holy Spirit. And the greatest tragedy is that he hasn't chosen to receive eternal life. As stipulated in Romans 8, 9, which says, But he are not in the flesh, but in the spirit. If so be that the Spirit of God dwell in you. Now, if any man have not the Spirit of Christ, he is none of his. If any man have not the Spirit of Christ, he is none of his. Paul addresses the carnal people as brethren in, his, in this verse, which shows they were church members. He couldn't call them spiritual because they weren't sufficiently filled with the Holy Spirit. They had grown in faith, and they should have. They hadn't grown in faith, and they should have. Let's be mindful. It's possible to be a church member for many, many years and still be a carnal Christian. Yes, I'm going to repeat that. It is possible to be a church member for many years and still be a carnal Christian. It's possible to have biblical knowledge, know where everything is in the Bible. You can quote the verses from now till, you know, in your sleep. Have that biblical knowledge and still not mature spiritually. Lord have mercy on us. Many carnal Christians feel dissatisfaction, disappointment, or lack of purpose in their spiritual lives. Some are unconcerned and say, we're just sinners. We can't do anything about it. Other carnal Christians are enthusiastic. Contrary, they're full of, you know, enthusiasm and are very active. They hold a lot of positions in church perhaps proud of their important positions in the church. Sadly, though, Jesus says in Matthew 7, 22 
to 23. Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in, that, in thy name? And in thy name have cast out devils? And in thy name done many wonderful works? And then will I profess unto them, I never knew you. Depart from me, ye workers of iniquity. Lord, have mercy upon us that we who are in the church and are working diligently day after day. Notice I said we now. That includes me. May the Lord help us that we don't find ourselves in this position with the Lord saying, I never knew you. Depart from me. What was the problem? They had no personal relationship with Jesus and no living connection with the Holy Spirit. My friends, in as much as we've heard this and we've reflect on it, I want you to know that there's some hope. If you find that you are a carnal Christian, at the moment, take heart. God, our God is a merciful God. You have the possibility of new life starting now. Many carnal Christians are in this condition unknowingly. They go about their daily business and they feel, I'm good. And you may, be alre you may already be praying for a deeper faith experience. Jesus desires that your joy may be full. In John 15, 11, he says, These things have I spoken unto you, that my joy might remain in you, and that your joy might be full. Praise the Lord for that. And he invites you to rest in the solid hope of eternal life. God is merciful. He don't want us to stay where we are. There's hope for us. So long as we don't continue to grieve the Holy Spirit and speak against the Holy Spirit, we can always come back. We can always ask the Lord to help us in our, to have a deeper faith and, and experience his love and his mercy. We are still carnal, but there is hope. As we look in 1 Corinthians 3, 1 to 3, again, Paul says, And I, brethren, could not speak to you as to spiritual people, but as to carnal, as to babes in Christ. I fed you with milk and not with solid food, for until now you were not able to receive it. And even now, you are still not able, for you are still carnal. For where there, is en there are envy, strife, and division among you, are ye not carnal and behaving like mere men? As we reflect on this, these words from Paul, I want us to look at ourselves. Where are we? Are we one who is deeply rooted in our faith? Walking with the Holy Spirit every day? Asking the Lord for us to have a deeper relationship with him? Are we there? Or are we one of those that Paul is talking about? Engaging in envy. Engaging in strife. And have the vision among us. Are we one of those who he called carnal? Let us reflect. And I want us to take a moment. Look at your heart. Look at where you are. And I'll give you a minute to pray on your own. And ask the Lord to help you to become more spiritual and to become that person he wants you to be. Invite the Holy Spirit. Let us pray. You're praying on your own at this time.
together. Dear Lord, thank you for including still in that text from Paul. For it reminds us that we don't have to remain in this situation. We want you to change us today, Lord, as we bow before you. We thank you that envy, strife, and division are healed when we live in the Holy Spirit. Please grant us your Holy Spirit. May your Holy Spirit walk with us daily, O oh God, and give us the mindset where we can hear and obey your Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name. Are we asking with carnal motives? Because we can pray, but we need to look at our motives when we pray. In James 4, 2 to 3, it reads, You do not have because you do not ask God. When you ask, you do not receive because you you ask with wrong motives that you may spend what you get on your pleasures. Now, these are not my words. These are the words of the Lord. This is in the book, James 4, 2. I'm going to repeat. You do not have because you do not ask, God. When you ask, you do not receive because you ask with wrong motives that you may spend what you get on your own pleasure. So we have to be careful. There's a few things here in this text. We need to ask God for what we want. Let us ask for that deeper relationship. Let us ask for the Holy Spirit to guide us day by day. And he said, we do not receive when we ask because we have wrong motives for asking it. We need to search ourselves and see what are our motives? Are these our motives Christ-like when we ask for something? And then later on, when we get what we want, is it for our pleasure or to do service for the Lord? Let us look at this text. Let us reflect on it and let us pray. Father, we live, in a, we, we, we live in spiritual poverty because we do not ask. Or we ask with selfish human motives. Today, Lord, tonight I ask that you transform us, each and every one of us. Not only transform us, but transform our prayers and guide us, O oh God, as we pray through your Holy Spirit. Let us ask for the things, O oh God, that are going to make us more spiritual, that will remove us from our carnal state and bring us into a state of spiritualness, righteousness. Help us, O oh God, that we will live with you, that your Holy Spirit will live with us daily. It will fill us, O oh God, that as we go through day by day, we will move from the carnal state that we are into that deeper relationship with you and become more spiritual. This I ask, O oh God, in Jesus' name. Amen. As you go through the rest of this week, we want you to continue to pray. Pray without ceasing. That is, you know, a big ad advantage that we have to connect with God. We can pray and ask him for anything. But tonight you were reminded you need the Holy Spirit in order to be spiritual. And when you ask, he will give and ask with the right motives. As you pray, here are some more suggestions for you. Continue to give thanks for specific blessings that you receive and praise God daily for his goodness. Remember, you can praise God when things are not going good, you know, because he says, while you're going through the battle, he's there with you. While you're in the fire, he's there with you. And that's reason to praise God, even if the situation is not a good one. So give thanks and praise God. Then take a few minutes for private confession daily. And thank God for his forgiveness. Sometimes we don't, you don't even know, you need to know what you're asking forgiveness for. Because sometimes our thoughts, 
the words are not pleasing to God. So let's take daily a few minutes to have private confession and thank God that he's a forgiving God. Ask God to grant, us, grant you wisdom for current challenges and decisions. Don't try to do it on your own. You got to rely on him. So ask him for the wisdom and he gives it. He says if we don't ask, we don't get. Okay? Ask God to bless the efforts of our local church. Those who are out there, you know, preaching the word of God. Ask the Lord to continue to bless them. The church, the world church, the regional church. Pray for current needs of church members, family, neighbors. Not just yourself, but for others. Because the other one might be, the other person might be also praying for you and you need the prayers of those you love. And even those who don't love and they want to bless you, praise the Lord for that. Take time. Take time to listen for God's voice and respond in praise and song. Take time. Let's not miss this part. This is where we're listening to the Holy Spirit talking to us. Take time. To listen for God's voice and respond in praise and song. I pray that the Lord will help each and every one of us, not only through these 10 days of prayer, but onward to have a deeper relationship with him and move from our carnal state into a spiritual human being who loves the Lord and is working for him. Let us pray. Thank you, Lord, for your wisdom. Thank you, Lord, for your guidance. Thank you for keeping us. And I pray, Lord Jesus, as we go through, that you will continue to be with us and you will never let go of our hands. Those who are listening via media, the Facebook and YouTube, Lord, you know their situations. And there's some out there who wants to move from their carnal state into that spiritual state. And I just pray tonight, oh God, that you'll draw divinely close to them. And as they ask, O oh Lord, you promise that you will answer. In Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen and amen. Thank you, Lord.